When people talk about the decarbonisation of the steel industry here in Port Talbot, thoughts inevitably go to the electric arc furnace, which is going to make uh, steel out of recycled scrap steel as opposed to the blast furnaces made out of virgin iron ore. Of that £1.25 billion investment, however, what people talk about less is the investment in the downstream assets the continuous casters, the hot rolling mill, and the replacement of the pickle line, which is an integral part of steel production in the UK. So we've come down here to the south end of the Port Albert Steelworks site today, to the Lorry Park, which is where some units have been uh, put, having been taken out of the area where the new pickle line will be based. That area is the old batch annealing bay. Uh, I'm joined by Phil Bridges. You are one of the lead engineers on the enabling projects of the pickle line. Firstly, Phil, tell our viewers uh, what is annealing and especially what's batch annealing, where these bases have come from. Um, primarily, um, Tim, they, they, we, we put the coils um, into a, stack the coils onto these bases back in the day. Um, they put a big hood on the top of them. They, they heat them up, hold them at 750 degrees in an inert atmosphere for 36, 48 hours and then cool them down slowly and then take the lids off and then take it on for further processing but it made softer steel yeah yeah and you say back in the day and that process of softening steel was to enable those steels to be more formable yeah. so i guess if you're thinking of car doors which need stamping yeah. and so forth it softened the steel back in the day of course in 1997 we built the continuous annealing process line here did that entirely replace the batch anneal here no uh, we had um, an ebner batch annealing continued, although these were decommissioned um, prior to the batch annealing, the, the, the batch annealing that we had coming into service. Yeah. Um, that was more uh, directed at sort of strategic um, product that, that Capital couldn't provide the customer. Yeah, yeah, and of course, you know, this is a plant that in its history has made three, four, five, best part of five million tonnes. There was a lot of product to be annealed in those days. So each of these square bases has got, what, four? four four round bases on it and each round base would have had how many coils sitting on it on their on their back stacked about four high about four high and how many of these bases have we got in total 54 wow so 54 bases each of which through four stacks so you're talking 200 bases and they'd have been covered with a an enormous hood yeah individually wow. the 54 bases would have 54 hoods and they would have been put in 1950s Wow, 1950s, stopped operating in 1997, but there's no reason to take them out before. But of course, now we're building the pickle line. We're continuing to operate the existing pickle line, so the new one had to go somewhere else, and it's going in the batch way. Yeah? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, early days on the pickle line project, but really the reason for coming down to us today was to say, this looks like a, an enormous project. It's not just a case of ripping these out, is there? Because these are big units, isn't it? It, it, it? it came with its own challenges, as you can imagine. Yeah. Um, because the, um, the, the batch annealing process is a softening, um, when we did some analysis of the steels prior to lifting, we realised um, the actual bases had annealed themselves, wow. so they're soft. Um, we did some initial calcs to, to try and uh, understand the best way of, of removal. Um, we submitted those calcs to TCE for them to verify and to check and, and we came back slightly um, an orthodox method of removal where we had to put clamps onto the beams, um, not really collar chains around because of the stresses that the, the base um, would have seen, potentially had a, a, a possibly for failure. Yeah. And in between, or where the fans sit, in between those um, and the base plate, there's asbestos seals. Wow. So we could not afford to break them up because yeah. of the, the potential release into the bay. Yeah. Um, so we did a lot of head scratching, um, a lot of detailed, meticulous planning has gone into this to, to get us to the, to the, to the day. Yeah. Um, and I, and I got to credit the team. It's, yeah. not, it's, not, it's not all one person, it's, it's the team. Uh, and and it's, a, it's a multi um, agency uh, approach. It was from logistics to, to, to agree to give us a section of the lorry park. Yeah with the rail traffic, with the slab just coming into the works, and then we're having to stop all that while, yeah. while we transport it. Works protection, Kingside services, Ingleside, 
and our own project team worked really hard to get us to this position. And unfortunately, this is only one of the smaller milestones <laughs> uh, that we've that we've that we've got coming at us. Yeah, it's happened amazingly quickly for such a huge project. Um, and I guess there's some big holes in the floor yep. over at the, the uh, Batch and Neil Bay. Uh, not quite yet. No. The flues that these were attached to, um, uh, and the exhaust flues that go up, and you see the chimneys on the outside by uh, uh, the hot mill compensator, unfortunately they all contain asbestos. Right. So we've now got a programme of work um, to build 54 enclosures, and uh, there's, a, there's 108 flues that have asbestos lined material in them. They all have to be controlled, removed in a controlled manner, mm -hmm and then disposed of. I tell you what, you know, <laughs> then it's one of the reasons we do these videos is because people have no idea the complexity of the work that has to go on. You know, I suspect people are going, oh, look, we'll build a new pickle line. Yeah, and I know it's a big processing line, but it's steel and it's a bit of welding and some electrics and all that sort of stuff. But the preparatory work of this, this is not a clean brownfield site, is no, it? No. You've got a lot of work ahead of you. We have. Um, the team are keen um, and they, they, they're really engaged. Yeah. Um, and, and that's across all, all the projects. Everyone I've spoken to, yeah. we're all we're all keen for it. It's just this is just one of the small milestones yeah. um, that we that we, we're all engaged with. And of course, you're doing it alongside an operational pickle line. But I think they're fairly well divided those two. So, is is that is that yeah, that, that, is, that is the case um, from a from a, a, a geographical perspective? Yeah. But all the services, or a vast majority of the services, feed the existing pickle line currently run through. The Neelan Bay. Yeah. So, you know, credit again, it was a multifaceted sort of approach. Again, with the, the electrical team, um, yeah. the, the, the diversion work that they're ongoing with, it's sort of swan in the pond sort of moment where yeah, yeah. Um, there's not much going on, on the surface, but the amount of cables that they've already removed that are redundant, that have identified that would have fed these over the years. Um, some of the, 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 the cabling that's been removed because the, the, the batch annealing is no longer in, in service. Yeah. But then there's some arterial, arterial feeds that actually feed the existing pickle line, right. which we've either got to move or we don't touch. Uh, in the process, we're looking at, at the, currently we're looking at what cables we need to redirect. Mm. And that's a piece of work as well. Yeah, and, I can and imagine. It's all, and it's all in, and, and, yeah. and underground. And them. as we said, you're part of the enabling team. Does your role end effectively for this project? Once you Do you hand over the site and say, listen, guys, it's ready for you now to build a pickle line on? Once the, the enabling work is complete, um, we'll then sort of, it'll transition in into the sort of the, the pre-construction yeah. phase, um, and then we'll help support the, the, the construction phase, and then you're into the build, yeah. we'll support that, then you're into the, the commissioning in a, in, a, in a couple of years' time. Yeah, I was going to say, what, um, in terms of timelines, when's the pickle line due to be commissioned? It's planned to be, or the plan is uh, December 27. Yeah. Okay, December 27th, and I know if I was watching this video, the question I'd want to ask you is, what happens to this lot? Paul Johnson and the Regen team will, will take over yeah. um, and reclaim it, and then we'll have the, we can reclaim the scrap. Um, we've got avenues with the brickwork, and we're exploring that to see if we can sell that on. Uh, but yeah, in essence, it'll all come back into the business. Yeah, because like most things in the seal industry, nothing goes to waste and this will be none the same. And there's plenty of scrap value, I'm sure, in there. So listen, it's been a, quite a, a specific insight into a part of the project that people haven't started talking about very much yet, the Pickle Line project. Um, a huge amount of work already going on, actually, and a huge amount more to go. Phil, thanks ever so much for bringing us down and seeing this. We're going to be following it through with interest because uh, you kind of lit a fire under lots of topics there that I'm sure we want to come and talk to you a bit more about, uh, as well as just the electric arc furnace. So listen, thanks very much again. Thank you for having me, James. Cheers, Phil. Cheers.